think we are here. All right, let me just turn on my stream. Hold, please. We'll get started here in just a minute. All right, well, I had my stream up. There we go. All right, everything's up. Let's do this. What's up, YouTube? Hope you all are doing well. If you're new to the channel, my name is Anson. This channel is focused around filmmaking, specifically filmmaking gear for the budget conscious filmmaker. I'm still working on that tagline, but basically what we do here is review budget camera gear. So welcome. Uh, nice to have you. Uh, if you guys have been uh, joining the streams lately, this is, I think, the third official stream. Uh, and so uh, welcome, as always. Um, what we're going to be talking about today, uh, and let me know if you guys noticed any issues with the audio. I'm not monitoring anything, so let me know if that's an issue. But what we're going to be talking about today, and, and I say talking, I like to these streams to be more of a discussion, uh, but the topic for, the main topic for today is cine modding your lens. And specifically, I'm going to use the example of the Helios 442. The Helios 442 is by far one of my favorite lenses as far as vintage lenses. And so really, really awesome. Um, and, you know, one thing that I do is um, on this channel, I do use, in, in general, I use a Blackmagic Pocket 4K and I have a, um, a, a whole rig uh, with a follow focus system and everything like that. And so basically, I got all of my lenses that are in my normal rotation to be somewhat cine modded. Now, if you're not familiar with cine modded, basically, in a nutshell, uh, and to basically oversimplify it, is it is turning your photography lens, adding a couple of components on it uh, to help it be more of a, a cinema lens, which has things like focus gears, or potentially a step-up ring, make everything a consistent size for things like ND filters, or in my scenario, I'm using an adapter ring uh, to have a matte box, and so that's... Uh, what we would use for the um, you know, some version of CineMod. Now, some people pay a ton of money to mod their 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 lenses. Uh, specifically, the Helios 442. There are people that will spend a ton of money to get it completely rehoused. Uh, and so, this is not that. Um, you know, as I said in my failed attempt at a uh, intro. Um, you know, my channel focuses on budget options, and so one of those is trying to almost like DIY cine mod the Helios 442 and some of my other lenses uh, so that I can use it on my rig and it can work with my rig. Uh, and so we're going to talk about what I do and I'm going to show you guys some parts. I feel like the parts that I've got gathered for this are um, some of the more budget friendly options. Uh, I've looked around um, and shopped around and I felt like the stuff that I got was probably the like I said, the most affordable option out there. Uh, so without further ado, I don't want to spend a ton of time just like babbling. Um, let's get into it and let's let's talk about my cine modded Helios 442. Uh, now this is, you know, let me let me take let me actually take off the the modifications. So if I take off the modifications, pardon the audio on this one. Let me open it over here. Now I'm not going to take off the adapter, the uh, focus ring, just because that's a pain in the butt to get on. But without the focus ring, this is basically what the Helios looks like. Now even this, you can see that I have a focus ring on the, uh, or a focus gear on the focusing ring here. Uh, and so if I turn that, that's my focusing. Now one thing I love about the Helios 442 is in something that's a challenge with some of my other photography lenses, like my Canon FD lenses, uh, is I don't, especially vintage lenses, I'm not going to try to declick the lens myself. 
Um, I may get somebody to do that. That's still something I may spend a little bit more money doing. Um, me personally, I don't try to declick my photography lenses. Um, I don't do a ton of like in shot exposure changes, and so I don't necessarily need that, uh, except for like certain projects. And then I may just find and rent an actual cine lens, or use one of the cine lenses I own that I don't need to make a modification on. Um, but one thing I love about the Helios is it already has a declicked aperture. Um, so if you're familiar or if you're not familiar with the Helios, there are two aperture, aperture rings. There's one that's clicked, uh, and basically if I like click this down, uh, what it will do is it will click to, and it's mine stiff, so I mean, there we go. Uh, so if I click it down to like f4, f2.8, it's super stiff. Uh, it's, it's clicked, right? Now, the fun thing about this is if I take the clicked aperture ring and I move it over to f4 or 5.6, now that second ring can go easily between the two apertures without any clicking motion. So the Helios already offers a declicked aperture, which is dope, 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 dope. Uh, and so now one thing that I will say that I could probably have done even more than this is to split up this focusing gear, uh, this, this uh, focusing gear ring uh, and put one part on the actual aperture ring and keep one on the, the focusing ring. Now, that being said, this one is sized appropriately for the focusing ring, um, but you might find a smaller size if you actually want to put gears on the aperture ring. Uh, so this is what the Helios looks like before I put any other modifications on it. Well, aside from the, the focusing gear. So if you put the focusing gear, what I'm using for the focusing gear is a Tilta seamless focusing ring. I think that's what the official name for it is. I'm actually going to pull all this stuff up here on their site here in just a minute. Um, but I love this. Sorry. I love this because it is seamless. So there's no seams. And they're $2 a piece. Now there's a catch to that. You will pay for shipping. And so one thing I would recommend uh, if you are um, looking at doing this especially on multiple lenses, is buy it all together. That way, obviously, you cut down on that shipping you know, per lens that you're modding. Um, but $2, seamless focusing ring from Tilta. Now, I chose Tilta originally because my whole rig is Tilta, uh, and so it just made sense. Um, but it just so happened I felt like they had one of the better options for a focusing gear. So you have the focusing ring. Now I'm going to stop and look at the chat for just a second. Uh, okay, what the Mapbox used for? Awesome. Cool. Uh, so, see so you have the focusing gear. Um, and next thing, the Helios offers a 49 millimeter filter thread up at the top here. So the the um, map box ring that I use is goes down to a 52. I think that's the smallest that it offers. So it doesn't offer 49. So the next thing that I'm going to do is a step up ring. Now I'm going to screw this away, let's screw this off way away from the mic. Now me personally, I went with a 67, uh, 49 to 67 step up ring. You're going to spend a little bit more than that. But the reason I did that is because the majority of my lenses, except for like two are 67 millimeter filter thread size. And so as far as like screw on ND filters, 67 made the most sense. But the links I'm gonna have in the description below are just some cheap step up rings for 49 to 52, which you should be able to find cheap anywhere. I gave you some from like Amazon uh, in that listing. Go look on eBay, you can find them anywhere. I've bought step up rings, like really old step up rings from like a camera gear store for like a couple bucks. So especially 49 to 52, that's not a huge step. Uh, so step up ring, we'll put that on. Watch me like drop or like scratch the lens like mid video and make everybody sad. Um, and then the next thing, so I have the step up ring. The next thing is going to be, I'm gonna get the lens cap out of here. 
The next thing is going to be the map box ring. Now I'm using the Tilta mini map box on my rig. And so this ring adapter is specifically made for that map box. But I feel like, and I'll have to do a little bit of research and maybe I'll comment below, uh, but I feel like the, this, the mini map box ring size is pretty standard with most map boxes. Um, I don't do a ton of research on map boxes because I've only really used the mini map box, um, but this will work for the mini map box. And all of my lenses are fitted with this ring. Uh, and so effectively, it never gets screwed on the, fir the right way the first time. It always takes like 10 attempts for me. All right, line it up. Oh God, you all can hear the grind. Oh, nope. This is good content, right? Let me, while I'm doing this, let me check the chat. Yeah, so um, Alex Price was mentioning, he didn't know that Helios had that, uh, the aperture ring. I don't know if all versions do. I've heard of some people having the version of the Helios Wolf 2 that does not have that declicked aperture option. So it may not be you. I would check though, because uh, that makes life so much easier if you're trying to mod your Helios uh, into a Cine lens. So we have the aperture ring. We have the Tilta mini matte box uh, adapter ring here. This adapter ring, $7. So the title of the video is $30 Cine Mod. I did $30 to account for shipping. So you really, like, as far as raw price, you're really only paying, like, especially if you go with, like, an inexpensive step-up ring, you're really only paying, like, $15. Uh, so really inexpensive, really inexpensive. We have a $2 uh, uh, focus gear. We have a, I mean, this step up ring cost me like $15 because I went from 49 to 67. But I believe the one I left in the description below is like six bucks. So maybe a little bit, yeah, six bucks. Uh, and then the map box ring is $7. And then if like, if you're a prime member, um, I believe the step up ring is free shipping. And on top of that, Tilta will charge like $15 for shipping. I feel it, so it advertises $15, but I feel like I paid way less. I think I paid like nine bucks. I don't know. It's possible. So this is the final version. Now, I also, because all of my, let me bring it back here so you can see this, uh, because all of my lenses have the same filter thread now, I just bought a pack of these uh, 67 millimeter filter thread uh, lens caps. You can probably find them for like five or $10. Um, or, you know, just take off all the modifications and put the normal lens cap on. But that bugs me. I want this, basically all of my lenses sit like this in the bottom, in my, um, in my lens drawer. So all of them look consistent. The only ones I haven't been able to do that, do this modification with fully are my super wide angle lenses. I have a, a 7.5, um, and I also have an eight millimeter. And just because... When you start putting this stuff on the front element here, that's a lot of layers. You have the step-up ring, you have the adapter ring. If you print an ND on there, that it's another layer. And just for like the sake of going through all those layers, a super wide lens is going to most likely start vignetting at that point, uh, just because it's 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 at that point it's. It's just too much in front of the lens to not cause some vignetting. Um, I th I feel like at some point my um, Laowa 7.5 was doing fine, but then after watching some footage back, uh, I felt like there was some vignetting. Um, but that also could have been just because I needed potentially a bigger filter thread size. Uh, so yeah. Now, I do want to pull this stuff up on the site so you guys can know what you're looking for. I also left the description for the items we're going to talk about in the, des the description for the items. I left a link to the items we're going to talk about in the description below. So if you don't want to necessarily like write these things down or co always come back to watch this video, those links are there. Um, the Amazon link is an affiliate link, uh, so just let you know. I've been bringing this into frame. I'm actually going to take a sip of this and read the chat for a minute. Hi, William. 
you show us pictures. It takes just got one. Um, Umar, I believe that's how you. Uh, Umar, are you talking about pictures with the Helios or uh, pictures like of the Helios with this the modification? Checked. Man, you guys are talkative. That's awesome. I love it. I always loving you guys uh, talk in the chat here. Three D printer. <laughs> Uh, Chris, you were talking about 3D printer. Um, I wish I knew somebody with a 3D printer that would alleviate the $2 that I'd spend on this, um, as well as some other crazy stuff. Uh, I really want to get somebody to DIY an anamorphic filter for me, uh, but that's I don't know anybody that has a 3D printer, unless I do, and you've never told me you have a 3D printer. printer. In that case, if you're watching the stream, hit me up. <laughs> so, um, perfect, perfect, perfect. Awesome. So those are some of the live chat. So let me um, let me go over to Chrome here, and I'm going to start sharing the screen. Uh, and let me know. So I'm working out this uh, stream deck. So let me know if it doesn't cut over to the uh, to the site. But basically, what we're seeing here is Tilta's website, where it um, is the seamless fo uh, focusing gear. Um, like I said before, what I love about this is uh, it is a seamless focus, which in the name, you kind of know it's there, but um, something that I, it, okay, so it's seamless focus um, and it's cheap. Like I said, $2 a piece. Now, it, where they get you definitely is in the shipping. So like I said before, if you're looking at saving some money, excuse me, uh, if you're looking at saving some money uh, and you want to you go you know, use these gears, definitely look at this option, but bulk buy these gears, like look at all the lenses you're buying for and, and buy these. Now, one thing I like about this is if you go, I'm trying to remember where they put the chart. Uh, if you go, oh yeah, it's just like this first, like if you go in the overview, you can find compatible rings and it will show you, matter of fact, let me click on this really quick. Uh, it will show you, like, if I'm using a Sigma lens, what size should I buy? If I'm using a Canon lens, what size should I buy? There is the option to measure a lens. Now, if you're using this for vintage lenses, most likely uh, you're going to have to do this. Excuse me. Um, now, I've noticed, and this is one thing I want to mention, when I had to custom size the, the uh, focusing gear ring, I noticed that when I got the rings, they were a little bit bigger than I needed them to be. Um, and because they're rubber, um, you know, be careful. Don't obviously hurt your lens. I would suggest buying the size under from what Tilta is telling you to buy. Simply just because it fits more snug, and especially if you're doing dealing with the Helios. If you have a Helios that has a, maybe have a little bit of a stiffer focusing ring, if you get one that's like even slightly loose, it will not pull. Like especially something like the um, uh, the Nucleus Nano, which doesn't have like a crazy strong motor, uh, and so you will want to um, make sure that you are um, very very snug on the lens. Uh, now I will say my Helios has probably more of a a stiffer focusing ring than than it should. Or not that it should. It just has a stiffer focusing ring. Uh, so I have the size, and I meant to look up the size that I got uh, and give it to you guys. I may, I may actually um, put that in the description or put it in like a pinned comment of what size to get if you're looking at the Helios 442. I meant to do that before the stream. Did not do that. I apologize. Uh, so if Tilta tells you to buy a certain size you may want to potentially buy the uh, maybe two sizes. I mean, being that they're $2, like you're not going to, I mean, it's $2, but still at the, same, at the same time, if you're like me, I don't want to wait another week <laughs> for the right size uh, focusing gear. Mark and I have talked about instant gratification so many times. And so when I get a package from Tilta, I want things to be out of the box working so I can start using it. Uh, and so, you know, I would say uh, measure the the, um, 
the uh, Helios and more specifically, cause I'll give you guys the specific size that I use for the Helios. Don't worry about the Helios, but like if you're using other vintage lenses or other lenses that aren't listed here, um, then, uh, you know, maybe consider going with a smaller size than that, depending on how tight you want that to be. Um, now the funny thing is if you look at like the Sigma lenses, unless they updated it, okay, they do have the 18 to 35. When I originally looked, they didn't have the 18 to 35. Uh, so I actually have it on the 18 to 35. Uh, what's nice is if you have the, um, you know, if you want something for the zoom ring and the, the aperture ring, no, zoom ring and focusing ring, uh, they have a size for either one, uh, for most of them. Uh, so that's nice. So if you want to double up, you can do that. Um, <laughs> instant gratification life. Oh yeah. So Mark, actually, so that's a good point. Mark was saying that his Helios is fully clicked. Excuse me. I had wings before this. I'm completely sorry. Um, but he's also rolling with the Helios 4.4-4. Four, four four. Um, so I think the 4.4-2 four, four is the one that has the dual rings. Uh, and so, uh, sorry, Mark. You lose out on this one. So just go get it declicked. Uh, I don't even know where you would go get it declicked or how much it cost. I really need somebody to do my Canon FD lenses because I tried once and i pretty sure I stripped a screw. Not doing that again. Uh, so, yep, order in bulk, shipping, uh, yeah, shipping is definitely a pain on these. And that's the only gripe I have about Tilta. It is, like, I think if you spend over, like, $35, you get free shipping. So, honestly, my first order, I ordered, I looked at all my lenses, I measured all my lenses, and just, like, bulk bought them. The pain for me now is when I get a new lens... And I have to go through that same process again because I, I maybe won't bulk buy. Now, I probably could do like batch buying where like I wait until I get, you know, maybe I get a new lens, but maybe I wait until I get, you know, like another lens to test out or, uh, you know, something like that um, and, and just bulk buy them. Uh, but I, I rarely actually buy lenses these days. Uh, now, I do have some lenses that I get to keep that I test that I, I, I do want to mod like, I have the um, Seven Artisans 55 millimeter f1. Point, is that f1.2 or f1.4? Um, that one I need to mod. Um, that one's going in my normal rotation. And actually, and I don't know if you guys are even, inter even interested in this, I kind of want to do a Seven Artisans versus Helios comparison. Uh, kind of like a budget versus old type comparison. Because, I mean, this is 56 millimeter f2. That's 55 millimeter f 1.4. I think that's what f 1.4. Um, and so, for the most part, and with the Heli with the seven artisans, you're not going to have like the swirly bokeh, bokeh, or anything like that. Um, but uh, you will have some character to it with like out of focus areas and things like that. So look for that. Um, but yeah, uh, so I, I, I didn't want to take up a ton of time on the stream, but I did want to. Um, Take it apart, take out the ring. So Chris, I, I tried doing, so I, I started to take the lens apart and that was the problem is there was a screw that just with, I guess, because it's a vintage lens, it's like an 80s lens, I was definitely not going to put that thing back together if I went any further. So that was the problem for me. Uh, and so um, with that being said, uh, so you have the seamless focus ring uh, from Tilta. Um you also have the, uh, so that's one thing, uh, Amazon. This is a step up ring. Now, where did that one come from? That was not the one I brought up before. I did not want a $19 step up ring. Is it because the photo deox is out of, oh, uh, that was random. Uh, step up ring, there's a plenty of options for like 5 or $6. Matter of fact, if you're not like me and you need something like next day, again, instant gratification, go look on eBay. You'll find them for stupid cheap. Uh, but 40, uh, that one's, oh wait, that one's 48 to 52. So you don't want that. You want 49 to 52 or 49 to whatever you're trying to step up to. You know, one thing to look into is your, if you are using screw on ND filters or polarizing uh, filters or, you know, UV filters even, um, look at whatever the largest size lens you have and buy that step up ring. Don't pay more money for multiple filters. Uh, that is definitely uh, a waste. 
Uh, seven artisans is going to be sharper, I think. I think the seven, seven, seven artisans will be sharper. But I think it also comes down to like, just like we have the debate between Sigma and pretty much anybody else is Sigma is so clinically clean as far as the image that it doesn't offer really any character or, um, you know, extra oomph when you go to create films and things like that. And so I think that's where the seven artisans is going to lose out to the Helios because the Helios is very clearly defined by its character. I mean, the biggest reason why people get the Helios is for the swirling bokeh. So, uh, but yeah, yeah, bokeh bomber is going to win. <laughs> Characteristic, at least. Oh, I, I, I actually now see your comment on the, the Helios. You literally said what I just said. Thank you. Also, like, Mark has turned into, like, my, my, my volunteer, like, volunteer, volun volunteer stream bot or manager. That's the word I'm looking for. So, thank you, Mark. Um, <laughs> so, we have the stuff of ring, uh, and then you have the mini map box uh, adapter ring. So again, $7. You're going to pay a little bit more in shipping, but honestly, so I look for Tilta, the step up ring and the, um, or not the step up ring, but the map box ring and the focusing gear on like eBay. It was, I think the cost even with shipping with Tilta still made it come out a little bit less. And I think you got a little bit faster as well. So yeah, the shipping is a little bit unreasonable. Um, I feel like $15 for us shipping is, is a little bit meh, uh, but it, it will uh, get the job done. So that's all the components. Like I said, I left everything in description below the Tilta stuff is not affiliate links. I don't, I wish I had an affiliate program with uh, Tilta or any partnership with Tilta at this point. Um, but the Amazon is affiliate. Uh, so definitely check this out. I think it's a great way of getting your lenses. And, you know, I use the Helios here because I know like this is one of my favorite lenses and this is probably one of the ones that's super easy to mod because unless you're using the Helios 444, it already has the declicked aperture. Uh, so, so really nice there. Um, a couple of things I wanted to mention before we start wrapping up the stream. Let me get back to me. Um, before we stop, uh, you know, uh, start winding down the stream, I did want to mention uh, next week, I don't think there's going to be a finished video. Um, I am going to be live streaming my reaction to the A7S III. Uh, and so if you're interested in that, I'm still working out the time. I'm thinking either 11.30 to 12 or 12 to 12.30 or like 12 to 1. But somewhere around lunchtime, we're going to be doing a live stream to react to the A7S III announcement. Um, I'm going to attempt to have somebody collaborate with me on that one if my computer will let me. And if it can't, it would be just me. Um, but I'm also going to do another, I'm trying to try to do streams every Thursday or Friday, just depending on my schedule. Um, but I like Thursdays. It's a nice little, uh, you know, quiet time. The kiddo has been really awesome. I didn't think it was going to be this way. She's been really quiet. She was a banshee, a lovely banshee right before this. So, um, yeah. Uh, so no, I don't think I'm going to do a finished video. And one reason for that is... On the subject of modding, I'm going to do a breakdown of my entire Blackmagic rig. And the problem I'm having is I don't know how I want to compose that video. So I think I've landed on how I want to shoot it and film it. Uh, it's just going to take a lot more time. Uh, and so with the live stream happening next Tuesday for the Sony, I figure it's a good time to take a little bit more time to make the video, put everything together the way I want it to be, just because there's a lot of stuff to it. My rig is, it's not the biggest rig, but there's definitely a lot of small uh, things here and there that I want to mention. So if you're into rigging, if you're into, you know, uh, follow focus, uh, map box, rig, just rig culture, rig, you know, I almost said, I said rig culture because of Josh Martin. Um, but if you're into rigging cameras, uh, Watch that video. Uh, that will probably be a week from Tuesday, so almost two weeks from now. Um, that will that will be live, uh, but I'm going to try to spend a little more time on it to make it exactly the way I want it to. I filmed it today, technically, and it seemed like 
my lighting was a little bit off. I felt like I was filming the Blair Witch Project all over again. Not what I wanted. So, um, awesome, awesome, awesome. Cool. All right, so it's about 8.30. I, I've been trying to keep these streams about 30 minutes. Uh, you guys have been awesome. Thank you guys for commenting, uh, chatting, uh, and, and definitely, you know, putting in your input. Uh, let me know, um, you know, one thing that I want to do is bring you guys more vintage lenses. Obviously, people love the Helios 442, but let's be real. There are some amazing vintage lenses out there. Um, I have a, um, a Canon 50mm f1.4 FD. Uh, that's going to be a review. I actually did a, a small film on that a couple weeks ago, and I'll link that up here once uh, the video is processed. Uh, but that review is coming, as well as a review on the Canon 24mm f2.8. And I'm not going to lie, that is an amazing, amazing lens. And so stay tuned for that. The Helios gets a lot of praise because of how unique it is, but by far not necessarily the best vintage lens out there. There are definitely ones uh, that may be better. Um, so we'll see if we can dethrone it. Uh, so that being said, um, you guys have a good night. Uh, I'm going to cut the stream off. And uh, yeah, as always, thank you guys for joining. Go and find your journey. Go embrace life. And I'll see you here next time. Peace.